Hey guys, I'm with Eddie Bravo, and we talked about music for a little bit. But what some people might not know is that you just did a movie, a little movie, a little episode. Yes, sure. short short movie or a pilot for a, a series. Mm -hmm. you know, the guy who produced it. It's called the. It's called Bravo and Company, which. I, I'm not a big fan of that, mm -hmm. but the, the guy who produced it is trying to sell it as a series. And the episode that's up on YouTube is called Return of the Death Knuckle. Which is very funny. You guys need to check it out. I'm just <laughs> saying, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was hysterical. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. I'm pretty shocked at the response. Yeah. I'm, I'm really shocked because when when I, this is, how, this is how it all went down. I dabbled in acting in my 20s. I mm -hmm. was, you know, I came to Hollywood and I thought, I might as well, like, you know dabble in acting and I took some acting lessons and uh, was an extra in a couple movies. Hello. I was an extra in um, Rock and Roll High Forever. It was <laughs> it was when Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were going down. Yeah. You know, do you remember yeah. them? Yeah. They did all these yeah. cute I, movies. I actually just watched, um, what's that the vampire movie with them from the 80s? Lost Boys. Lost Boys, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were huge back in the day. Yeah. And when, when on their downslide, they, uh, one of the last movies they did, was Rock and Roll High Forever, which was a sequel to the Ramones Rock and Roll High School. Uh, Remember okay. that? It was, I didn't see that. It was that terrible. Better. It was terrible, but I'm in that. That's too funny. I play. I, I actually played two parts as an extra. I was the metalhead in class in the background with a, a Walkman on. I was like headbanging. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And I was also a punker, like a '70s Sex Pistols punker. Look at you, so movie. versatile. <laughs> and show. Um, I dabbled in stand-up comedy as well with Joe wanting to groom me as uh, his opener and I did some open mic nights and bombed most of the time but I felt like I could be successful in, in stand-up comedy but it would take a lot of work it's yeah. really it's an art you got to craft it, it you can't is. just go up on stage and free ball you got to have an act yeah you got to have it stand-up is no joke yeah so it takes a lot of time a lot of practice and I thought man I just don't have enough time to you know, focus on my music, focus on jujitsu, and then and then stand up comedy and acting. So I decided to just, if it came up, I would do it, but I'm not going to pursue it. So this came up. So uh, Chris Garcia, this filmmaker, approached me, emailed me, and, and asked me if I would, if I was interested in playing a part like a Mr. Miyagi type dude in a martial arts movie. Yeah. Like a serious martial arts movie. Yeah. And I would be the guy training, you know, the hero of the movie or something. I go, I'll do it. Cool. So we met. And uh, he was he's a great guy, you know, and a really s smart, brilliant filmmaker. And um, and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to put me in that movie, and he had, like, a couple other scripts, and he really wanted to push me. He thought, he thought that I would make a good actor. Yeah. And I you told him good. I had... You were good. In, well, thank in you were good. Well, thank you. I was really impressed. You were good. Thank you. I hadn't practiced acting, like I said, in 14 years. It's been so long. And, and, and I told him, I asked him, I would love to do your movies. I would love to just read a script and memorize it and, and all that. But if you if you want me, I can do that or you can let me be more involved, you know, mm -hmm. as a producer. I got ideas and mm -hmm. I got a lot of talent around me. And mm -hmm. he's like, he was all ears, like, what ideas do you have? And I s sat him down and I I played him some Renato Laranja stuff mm -hmm. and uh, played him some oh, jo yeah. Joey Karate stuff. Yeah. And I'm, I told him, I go, man, I, I got this story. You know, I got this idea for the Joey Karate story. Like, let's, you know, I had an idea for yeah, the Joey Karate movie. should be a spin-off for him. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's going to, you know, it'll be included in this, too. And he was down. He loved Hinato. Hinato's talented. He's hysterical. He's awesome. Hysterical. Yeah. He plays the bad guy in Return of the... He plays Flavio de Souza. He, the part with... The, co the first part I cracked up was when he grabbed the coconut. Like, he's like, I want my coconut water. And he's yeah. drinking that. I'm just like, that's just, I don't know. He's hysterical. Take it easy. Now I'm gonna ask for you, in English. Where's in my steroids? I just loved Hinato. He loved Joey Karate, and we decided to do it. But Joey couldn't. He. It was gonna be the movie the Return of the Death Knuckle was gonna be about Joey was gonna be the main bad guy. Mm. But he had something come up in the East Coast that he couldn't get out of, and and we already booked because it was super low budget. Yeah. And, you know. We got everyone to work together for free on yeah. one day. How and long then, did it take to film? Like two days. Really? Yeah. 
Oh, that's pretty quick. We did it all at Legends. Uh, yeah, well, yeah I, I noticed. I recognize. I recognize some stuff. I was like, I know that place. We did it all at Legends. Everything was there. 90% of it was all at Legends. And we just knocked it out really quick. But um, So Joey couldn't make it. So And uh, Hinato was going to be the informant. Mm -hmm. So we moved. I, I thought it would be perfect to have Hinato as the uh, a, a steroid dealer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then we filmed it. Hinato did a great villain. He played a perfect villain. Yeah. I was impressed with his, his acting. is amazing. And Joey ended up coming back and being the the informant. Yeah. So they switched roles, and it ended up being perfect. Yeah, no. It was just perfect. I it, mean, was it was a blessing. Star Even Joey at the end, when he was talking to that guy, having the debate with Bruce Lee and Jet Li and stuff yeah. like that. Hysterical. Yeah, I love it. yeah. A lot of that stuff is just, like the whole tambourine thing. Yeah. Oh, the tambourine. I love that, too. So we just showed up, and there was... Chris had a script, but we were just free balling. Yeah. I mean, you can't write anything for for, for Hinato. Hinato, you give him little situations, and you you know I'll throw him some ideas, but you want you want good quality comedy? Just let Hinato go yeah. off, and just let Joey go off. We put yeah. Joey in a situation, and we you know all we said is just bring up Bruce Lee, and yeah. then all that was him. Yeah. It was all Joey. But that's the best sometimes yeah. when you have guys like that that can just, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's Just let them, like, have fun and just film yeah. it and see what happens and yes. then use the best. So. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what, what went down. And we just freeballed. We had an idea and all these scenes. Like, Chris, and I really didn't know how it was going to come out. I thought, man, this, this could look like shit. Yeah. You know, I wasn't that confident with, I was really insecure about my acting because I hadn't acted in so long. I, I didn't even... Practice. Yeah, I just showed I up. I think you were good. Thank I think you. You were good. Thank you. I was really nervous about that. Like, how is my acting gonna come off? You know, it's been so long, and I didn't practice. I didn't. Even, I read the script once. And I'm like, I'm just gonna show up and just yeah. see what happens. You know, and looking back now, I wish I would have practiced more. But um, everyone around me did such a great job. I mean, Chris's acting was awesome, and uh, ev all the actors on there did it, such a great job. Yeah. The cop in the beginning, yeah, he was all jacked up. He's like. I don't even know what the fuck Bomba is. <laughs> even every guy did great. Yeah. Was, and again, I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. And um, then when I saw the final cut, and you know, Chris, he did everything. Chris, he edited it. He put the music. He just made it look. He made it look legit. Yeah. And when I saw it, you know, for the first time, I'm like, whoa, this looks really good. I didn't think it was going to look this good. Yeah. That opening single, Hinata, that's an all-time classic. Right there. <laughs> That's, that's an you all have time. to watch it. Where can people watch it? On YouTube. Just, on, just type it in, right? Yeah, Return of the Death Knuckle. The sequel? The next, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are ever... When, when is it? You don't know if the next episode's coming out or what's going to happen. We're right? for sure going to do more episodes, but we're trying to get it picked up. Right now, Chris is uh, Chris is in, in the entertainment business, and mm -hmm. he's shopping at, uh, you know, he's meeting with people. So, but if it doesn't get picked up, we're just going to have to... Free balling ourselves. Yeah. We, the hard part is locations. We already used legends, you know what I mean? You, you, <laughs> you, can, you can always do it because I mean, it's even, you can spice it up and like switch it around and stuff. Yeah. yeah. With legends. The, yeah. It's, legends is huge, so. Yes. There's yes, a lot is. of space in there. Yeah, you're right, you're right. It's funny, you guys check it out. So just type in Return of the Death Knuckle, right? And then, yes. okay. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Eddie Bravo, and you need to watch Joanne at MMAgirls.net. Get on it! Yay, MMA girls! <laughs> and it's just one girl.